have to apologize for being off schedule here with uh, with my friends at uh, the Infinity Sequence. Uh, my apologies, and I'll try to um, keep on track with uh, the scheduling of these uh, wonderful themes. Uh, this theme of ET contact is something that is uh, becoming more and more important um, in our in world culture. And it is a, uh, a thread that is uh, weaving its way through um, all of the um, countries of the world, really, and, and all of the continent, continents, and uh, has its different, its different playback with the, um, the different cultures. Uh, th this is something very important in my own work as a in study of cultural history or the history of religions, whatever you want to call it. Um, I note the difference, of course, between India and China and uh, the Mediterranean Basin, uh, Eastern Mediterranean, Western Mediterranean, Northern Europe, the Americas, and so forth, all of these differences. And yet, um, this phenomenon of ET contact is present in all the continents. And it is expressed in terms that are surprisingly similar uh, by people who have had experiences and who come from other cultures. And uh, John Mack, the late Dr. John E. Mack, um, was uh, surprised um, and, and marveled at this continuity of, um, of images and impressions of uh, these people who um, witnessed to the experience of these extraterrestrial or non-terrestrial uh, intelligent beings. Uh, we say extraterrestrial, of course the model is the, 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 the space vehicle, you know, flying saucer, rocket, whatever, and uh, so there's this physical movement through space uh, propelled by some, some force, uh, whether not rocketry, obviously anti-gravity, etc., 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 faster than light travel, uh, possibly, etc. All of this model, uh, you might say the, the Star Trek uh, technology model, uh, is something that we can put in parentheses. We don't need to uh, make this the only model. The other model, of course, is um, time travel is another thing, you know, or uh, simply the movement between parallel universes, uh, time as being a multi-track or a branching um, uh, movement, uh, so uh, so that 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 uh, there, that each moment in in each particular uh, time track uh, might have branches and so forth, and all of these are developing in different ways. So we keep in mind that we don't have uh, the final answer. We don't have a single paradigm. We don't have. Um, an appropriate name for all of this, except uh, from the the way the people who experience uh, and consciously remember uh, experiencing contact with uh, those whom we call ET, um, they they give them descriptions and even names, and so we have the Greys. Although I'm fascinated by one of the. Uh, uh, Latin American uh, subjects uh, whom uh, John Mack, uh, Dr. John Mack, um, interviewed, and uh, she called them Blue Baldies. Uh, a very interesting alternative uh, image, a name, uh, uh, supposedly referring to the same kind of being, a uh, different image. And we have the tall white, so called, also called Nordics and so forth, um, one tends to imagine these other beings as somewhat similar to oneself. There's a certain anthropomorphic uh, projection upon them. Uh, this might be projection. It might just be that we, um, in, um, in our own culture, do have certain experiences and then project upon them, upon those who engage in these, ex these, these exchanges, these contacts, project upon them our image of what an intelligent being is supposed to be, and obviously that image is ourselves, uh, because uh, we have to really accept the uncertainties, not of the fact of these contacts. This is fact 
as much as anything that is given to us in recent history. The, the witness of, of absolutely transparent people, uh, people of all walks of life, people uh, highly intelligent, some of them uh, very well educated, uh, so these are intelligent people, or they can simply be, you know, your neighbor um, on, on, in, the, in, the, in the city housing block or, or uh, um, down the street in the suburb, whatever, and people who have no investment in making any kind of advantage out of, out of their experience. And it's very hard to get this experience out of them. As Dr. Mack found, the vast majority of these people, these experiencers, as he called them, simply don't want to hear about it. And if they can find a naturalistic, that is, um, a purely terrestrial explanation for this, they would much prefer this. But they know from themselves, and they also know from people who tell it to them straight, that there isn't a terrestrial explanation of this. So I'm going on with this because I think this is very important. Now, the best I can do is share with you some personal experiences, indefinable memories, intellectual memories, uh, because the, memory, the intellect has its own memory, uh, thoughts that have been thought, uh, awareness that I have been aware, and yet these intellectual memories may not be accompanied by uh, images. All right, so this is subjective. This is um, my uh, intelligent re-elaboration of some strange things in my childhood. Um, it was just before, just after my sixth birthday, and we were in Tucson, Arizona. I had been experiencing during the night these, these um, images of, of, of you know, frightening beings in my room in the dark. I was not afraid of the dark. I was afraid in the dark. And you'll find that many children, you know, will say, Mommy, 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 there's someone in my room. They are not afraid of the dark. They're afraid in the dark because this half-light of something there is what deeply disturbs them because these are unfamiliar. Be that as it may, I'm happy with a naturalistic explanation of that. Um, when I lay down for my nap, my mother sent me into my room, and I wasn't in any mood to sleep. I didn't, wasn't sleepy. I didn't want to sleep. And I was lying down, and in that moment, I had a very clear notion that an intimate part of my body was somehow connected to a machine, was put into a machine. What is this? And a, a sort of an inner voice said, try to remember, who did this? But I, I knew that it was, my, it was my duty, as it were, to remember what had happened. And nothing ever came to me. It was a kind of a conversation with my parents, and, and I couldn't. There's something that stopped me. No, I can't ask them. Did this happen to me in the hospital, or a doctor do something? Or Obviously, the, you know, the bunker's going to say, ha, ha. Got it. Naturalistic explanation. You were abused as a child, huh? around the age of three or four or five, whatever. And you had covered this over with something about a machine and so forth like that. I can't say no. I can't say that's not likely. But my memory was very acute. My earliest member, memory is from when I was less than two years old. And I was remembering dreams also. I was remembering dreams and telling them to my mother. And I knew very well the difference between dream and reality, between fantasy and that which my five external senses gave to me. Now, both my five external senses presented to me a very mysterious world. As a child, I had this sense of the, of, of the cosmos and of, of, of relatedness to beings in the stars and so forth. And so I am one of those who has some, an intellectual conviction that there has been some contact in my life, but very poor on images. That's about all I can say. 